Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 25th of March. Hope you all had a great trading week and if you do like the uh, videos that I provide every week and find them useful, uh, please don't forget to press that like button, subscribe as well as share this content on your social media platforms. So uh, getting into the week ahead and this week, <clears throat> the focal point in the United States will revolve around the PCE prices alongside reports on personal income and spending and speeches by several Fed officials, including Chair Powell, drawing significant investor attention. Other key data points include durable goods orders, the final Q4 GDP growth reading, uh, CB consumer confidence and housing market indicators such as new and pending home sales. In Germany, market watchers will be keen on updates regarding GFK consumer confidence, retail sales and the unemployment rate. And it will be a busy week in Japan with the Bank of Japan summary of opinions, unemployment rate, industrial production, retail sales and housing starts. And finally, Canada will, find, will release its February GDP growth estimates. And so, um, although a fairly busy week, not as busy as uh, what we saw last week, a lot of fireworks went off, a lot of unexpected moves and expected moves in the market. And we're going to go over that um, in just a little bit. And before, uh, but before we do, I'm just going to go into a couple of trades that I took this week. One winner, one loser. And uh, the first was the euro yen. So the euro yen, a bit of analysis on this. And I'll get into the the real kind of more specifics in terms of the fundamentals uh, a bit later when I analyze the uh, the yen. But uh, I um, had a loser on this trade. Uh, I think many traders would have ended up losing on this in terms of um, the result of the trade, right? So um, I had anticipated that the Bank of Japan were going to high crates. I mean, it was kind of expected that they would high crates. Now, the danger in... Um, in that is that you do you we can get liquidity uh, massive liquidity hunts in a big event, especially when the Bank of Japan have hiked rates. Uh, it's the first time they're hiking rates in like seventeen years, and so what I did was I entered a small position. Um, ahead of the um, the news, maybe about a couple of hours before, I think it was, <clears throat> and I only entered one position, just um, with my stop loss uh, around the one six three zero six six level. And the reason why I entered one rather than my usual three was because if there was going to be any volatility and I get stopped out, first of all, I don't think I, I was awake during that time when it came out at three in the morning. Um, <clears throat> if I did end up getting stopped out, I could wake up in the morning and then if, you know, prices had started to go in the direction, then I would, you know, re-enter again. So, um, I only entered into a small position, only one position, set one, um, one market order and, uh, the market went the other way on a hike. Now, a lot of traders would have, um, you know, uh, been scratching their heads and saying, well, why is the yen going the other way? Uh, it doesn't, the textbook say that if you, you know, central banks hike um, interest rates, then that should appreciate a currency. And typically, usually it does. On this occasion, though, <clears throat> it was seen as more of a dovish hike. And again, I'll get into that a bit later. But that was the uh, the loss um, and prices went uh, a lot higher. Now, I actually am in another uh, trade somewhere around this high. I'm not really going to get into it in this video, but it's a, um, actually it was around here. Um, and it is a uh, stop hunt. So stop hunt in um, uh, around here. So I'm short again on this euro yen. So let's see how that works out. And if it starts to work out, I mean, whether it works out or not, I'll update you guys next week on the trade um, trade idea and the, uh, see how that trade plays out. Um, the Aussie CAD was the next one. This was actually a winner. <clears throat> and so this was a daily demand zone. Prices had come down into this daily demand zone. And um, on the, uh, there was some news with regards to inflation on the Canadian dollar 
and it was expected and forecasted to go uh, come out higher than the previous and actually came lower than expected and much lower than the previous. And so um, uh, that was, wasn't great news for the Canadian dollar. And so I entered um, at the 0.8869 area with my stop loss around the 0.8819 uh, price point. And um, prices came up, hit a one-to-one, Typically, I uh, take off uh, 50%, but I thought that uh, I would take off 80% uh, partial profit, get myself into a profitable position, and then I'm just swing trading the 20%. And I didn't manage to actually get back into this trade as um, in terms of uh, enter into multiple positions uh, because price just didn't pull back and uh, hit my 50% pending order or even the... Um, or even the uh, ninety five percent pending order. So once prices hit the uh, my profit target, um, then I cancel these orders. So although prices come down since, um, I'm not entering into any new trades based on this entry. I'm I'm entering trades. I'm going to re-enter into this because I do think that prices should want to go higher. Um, uh, based on a new entry now. So um, I am still in this trade. I haven't actually trailed my stop loss up, and although I should really stop to do that, glad I didn't, because I would have been stopped out of that uh, 20% um, uh, that I left on the table from that trade, but um, I will start to trail it up if I don't get stopped out, and I want to probably add to this if I can get another entry at some point. So um, the Australian dollar, um, a decent winner, and the Euro yen was a loser, but I am back in um, around here. And many of you guys who know about stop hunts, really, it's a, it's it's a, the stop hunt has happened right there. So you see where you've got prices come back inside. So that's where the stop hunt is, and that's where I've... I've entered, so let's see what happens this week and if we can get prices actually start to roll over, which I think they <clears throat> they should do. So uh, yeah, let's get into the uh, the week's fundamentals and starting off on the uh, the US dollar and going to the daily. And what we have here is this is a equally weighted dollar index, and um, I have a video on the equally weighted dollar index. Uh, if you look at the top right hand side of the screen, you can click on there um, and uh, understand why I use it equally weighted rather than something like the dollar index, the DXY or the USDX. Now, this week was quite interesting in terms of um, the Federal Reserve. Their um, <clears throat> statement on FOMC statement on Wednesday was actually quite uh, a bit dovish or considered dovish. And it says here the headlines that the US Fed holds policy steady and sticks with free uh, cut view for 2024. Um, there was the potential for them to actually say two, but they stuck with three. And it says here the Federal Reserve left the Fed funds target rate unchanged and continues to indicate three basis, uh, 25 basis point cuts um, is the most likely path ahead for 2024. This is modestly dovish, but with growth and inflation projections revised higher, the Fed believes that the risk um, that the risk is that interest rates will be higher than previously thought over the longer term. So over the longer term, that's actually quite hawkish. But in the in the medium to short term, um, you know, the uh, the Fed cuts are uh, considered a bit dovish and the market has definitely started to price in. Um, the uh, the fact that rate uh, cuts are coming in June. So if we go to June here, um, June the 12th is when that's expected. If you look at ease right here, you'll see that there's a 75% chance of an ease and a 24% chance of a no change. Now, um, about a week ago, um, the chance of a no change was 41%. And the chance of an ease was 55%. So uh, uh, the, um, the chance of a cut has increased. Now, um, on the chart, it doesn't necessarily reflect that. And so there is actually an opportunity if you did want to look for short trades, um, you know, as confluence in terms of you're not trading, you know, the equally weighted dollar index. <clears throat> you're looking for this as confluence of so prices come up to a nice technical level. And if you do want to get short on the dollar pair, then, you know, you've got that as confluence. So you, you can look for some short trades. Now, 
I'm of the belief that um, I'm still looking for long dollars at the moment um, until really inflation starts to show that the Federal Reserve are going to, you know, um, uh, cut a lot more and the more the market is a bit more dovish on the dollar so for now um, I am actually still more bullish than I am bearish on the dollar so I'll wait for more of a pullback into a zone either that demand zone there or you've got a lower demand zone here before looking for confluence um, and to go long but if this week as we mentioned I think they got uh, the PCE prices which is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation if that does start to come down quite a lot then in fact I will look for some short trades um, on the dollar um, yeah so that's really where we are with the dollar um, dollar yen <clears throat> so uh, this week again uh, the market was pretty much surprised uh, by the move or everyone pretty much was surprised by the Bank of Japan move and so um, talking about the uh, dovish hike so it says here the yen is vulnerable to Fed after Bank of Japan keeps traders guessing on more hikes and so <clears throat> it says here that the currency is sliding versus the dollar hit 2008 lows against the euro and ultimately um a dovish a dovish hike so what is really a dovish hike and how it was kind of interpreted was the fact that once the bank of japan hiked rates um they didn't give any guidance whether they would hike more now typically and usually when uh, central banks hike rates they they, it, it's normally in a cycle, right? There's a there's an interest rate cycle, there's an inflation cycle, uh, there's a GDP cycle. Um, you know, things move in cycles, right? And so, when central banks are cutting, it typically means that they're going to be cutting, and historically, they tend to cut. You know, several times. They don't, it's very rare that they just uh, cut once or hike once, right? And so. With the uh, Bank of Japan, they're on the hiking cycle. They're on this end of the cycle. And so when uh, uh, Ueda came out and said, you know, and, and hiked rates, the market was unsure as to whether they would be hiking again. There was no indication that they would continue to hike, which the market interpreted as being um, uh, quite dovish. But um, about a day or two later, um, you know, uh, Bank of Japan watchers see the next rate hike by October and risk of faster moves. So economists flag risk that bank may move faster than expected. Polies indicate 155 are likely yen level to prompt intervention. And so um, it says here the Bank of Japan will raise rates again by October and may hike at faster than expected pace with yen weakness among factors that may come into play according to Bloomberg survey of economists so the fact that the bank um uh, the the yen actually weakened after a hike is undesirable right for a central bank hey, they actually want the market and they want the the, the their currency to appreciate because it didn't appreciate that puts pressure on the bank of japan to try to get uh, try to implement moves like intervention and more hikes to actually get the currency to start to appreciate again, right? And appreciate meaning on the yen because it's the quote currency, not the base currency. They want the yen to strengthen against the dollar, which would mean the yen coming down, right? So um, from from that perspective, just because, you know, the, the first hike after 17 years didn't appreciate the yen it doesn't mean that it's not going they're not going to you know they're going to be happy with that and they're not going to do anything about it so just you know just one trade you know you lose one trade on that um for me anyway um nothing's changed they're still looking to hike of course so and uh, appreciate their currency so for me any short trades around here is decent now i would say if i'm looking to buy the yen it wouldn't necessarily be against the dollar reason being is because i think the dollar is one of the although you know i'm, I'm actually uh, more bullish than i am bearish on the dollar um i'm looking for a weaker currency than the dollar um to to trade against the yen so i'm looking for a very very weak currency so um so with that although it's line it's lining up to be a very very nice trade and some shorts and even a stop hunt just above here um i think i'm going to ignore this trade until 
the Federal Reserve uh, really start to get a lot more dovish and um, uh, on their uh, on their rate uh, cuts. And so we have now a situation where you've got one central bank looking to high rates, another one looking to cut rates. And the closer the Fed gets to cutting rates, that's where you're going to see or you should see the um, the yen actually start to strengthen a lot more. So um, there is a definitely a nice setup here and just above here from a stop hunt perspective. Um, but I'm already in two yen trades. I'm in the euro yen and I'm also in the CAD yen. So I never want to overload the um, any kind of yen shorts. So uh, those are really your options. If you do want to be a buyer of the dollar, though, uh, you'd have to really kind of wait for prices to pull all the way back down to the 147s from a daily um, uh, demand zone perspective. There's really nothing in between any levels that I would look towards to look to buy the dollar and less prices, of course, make higher highs, right? If you want to be long, you have to wait for a higher high to be made and then a pullback into that uh, higher low before looking at long trades. Um, looking at the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD uh, this week, the uh, Canadian dollar, one second, um, the reason why I'm more short on the, I have a short bias on the Canadian dollar was because uh, last week the core inflation metrics give Bank of Canada room to talk cuts. So um, as we kind of highlighted in on the Aussie CAD trade that I took, the you know inflation came down and closer to the bank's two percent target, which should weaken the um, the Canadian dollar over you know the medium term and so this is basically what's started to happen now this is a more of a trickier pair to trade because both central banks are cutting rates but if i had to go for one of the two i'd probably say the dollar the, the us dollar is in a better position so i think any pullbacks into this area here are decent for a long trade but if you do want to look for short trades this is decent as well um you can even look for a really nice stop hunt because you could um, if if the Fed start to get a bit more dovish and inflation does prove that it's coming down to their 2% target and the dollar starts to be a sell, then I think anywhere around now or a stop punt or uh, up into the into, into this supply zone here should be decent for a short trade. The pound um, dollar and the pound dollar, I exited this trade um, uh, the previous week and it actually turned out to be a really nice stop punt above um, got out a bit too early and look at that, it's played out. But um, the reasons I got out for it were correct, uh, I still think. Now, the the uh, the pound um, had some, also had some data this week. And it says here, UK bonds rally after hawkish Bank of England member drops, members drop vote for a hike. So pound extends its decline against the US dollar to 1% and gilt lead gains across global bond market on dovish tilt. So there were two uh, Bank of England members who are seen as hawkish and what they've done is they've removed their vote um, for a hike. So that is seen as um, dovish and then more of a closer step towards uh, cutting rates. And so um, you started to see now the uh, a change in the pound valuation and the pound is starting to sell off. Now, do I think that the pound is an absolute sell? I think there are reasons to buy and sell the pound. Um, uh, there are talks in the short term that the, the, the Bank of England could cut uh, uh, rates in, in May, but I don't think that is, I think that's too soon. It could be June, and but either way, I think in the short term, there could be uh, short-term um, moves to the downside in terms of uh, the way that um, the market may be pricing in more of a, a more cuts uh, for the, or sooner cuts for the Bank of England. Now, um, there is also uh, the fact that if data does support uh, the Bank of England cutting later, then this is going to look like actually a really nice uh, buy. But I think if I'm looking for a buy trade, it will have to be in, um, uh, it's probably maybe somewhere around here, or maybe around the 125s, 124s. But again, 
this pair is a bit of a tricky pair simply because both central banks are looking to probably cut around the same time. But that also does mean that, um, you know, you are likely to see prices look to range or auction. So rather than trends. So I do think that um, there, there is an opportunity to buy the pound somewhere around these one to five round numbers and maybe just below it, maybe a bit of a stop hunt below that level. But um, yeah, you can look for a buys or sells on this currency pair. Pound yen, um, again with the shift in the, uh, the 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 pound dovishness, you're starting to see now price start to sell off. Uh, if you are looking to continue to be a buyer of the pound, then you're looking at that. If you're looking for a um, a move to uh, try and sell the pound against the yen, then you're looking for a pullback up into the uh, this supply zone before looking. At short trades, my preference would be to buy the yen now because again they are they've started their hiking cycle and it's highly unlikely that they will just do a one and done. And of course, uh, the data does need to support that as well. If the data comes out and the data is not, um, you know, the data is uh, uh, not supporting rate hikes and uh, the Bank of Japan do hold for longer, then that would mean that the uh, the yen is likely to remain potentially on the weaker side until um, other banks do continue to cut because they even though they would be holding rates right you, you have you might have the bank of japan holding rates if everyone else is is cutting rates yeah then that is still a divergence that you want to trade and buy the central bank uh, currency that is holding rates right because other central banks are actively looking to devalue their currency so uh, yeah, that's pretty much the, the logic behind it. Uh, the US dollar, um, euro US dollar, and you've got, again, uh, prices uh, selling off quite a wide zone of supply. I know traders don't necessarily like to see that, but that's just it is what it is in terms of, uh, you know, the trade, in terms of how you trade it, where you trade it in here. All you can do is just break it down on a lower time frame and uh, go into either look for major levels of of on the daily like support and resistance all right right there that looks like a nice zone where you've had support and then the support and resistance in this area so around the 109s 109 round number just above that would be nice for a potential sell and then you can get a bit more detail by going into the lower time frames and looking for those types of levels as well so you can say all right now i want to trade around there probably want to trade around there as well but knowing that you've got ultimately the higher time frame supply zone um, on your site so um, with that being said again the uh, the euro there was uh, some data and some news from the ECB and ECB's Lagarde tells eurozone leaders price slow down to continue so um, you know, e the easing in the euro area inflation is expected to persist thanks to the effectiveness of monetary policy. European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde told euro area leaders at a summit in Brussels, according to people familiar with, with the discussion. So euro, um, for me, again, at the two, uh, the guys in the private members group know that I've been uh, had more of a short bias on the um, on the euro versus the dollar and you can see that start to play out now and it's playing out over the past couple of weeks now if you do want to be a buyer on the euro um maybe on some dollar weakness this week on data um this we have um you know come down into a really really nice uh, technical level in terms of a demand zone with the confluence of some support and resistance um but if the data doesn't support the um uh, or continues to support uh, the fact that the dollar uh, to be a buy, then you're probably looking at, you know, moves down to maybe the bottom of this range. The 107s, I think, is going to be a decent area. But also as well, that 107 does look like a nice technical area for the uh, for the euro. And that's also a nice capture pain relief trade as well uh, set up that we that we take. So that's very, very nice. Um, in terms of technicals on both sides but from a fundamental perspective i'm more looking towards buying the dollar and selling the euro a euro 
um, yen, so the euro yen this week. Uh, again, this is more of a stop hunt trade. Uh, prices went, you know, kind of blasted through the um, that supply zone, that daily supply zone, put it to cut a whole load of liquidity before hopefully heading to the downside. So um, right now from a daily supply zone, it's not the strongest supply in the world, but there is supply there. Um, on an intraday, you probably will see it a lot better, but that's what you're looking for if you're looking for any kind of short trades. If you're looking for a long trade, then you are the first area to look for some long trades to buy. The euro is going to be down into this 162.3 uh, area, and then you're looking at anywhere around this zone here to look for some buy trades. But um, with the euro uh, cutting rates and the Bank of Japan looking to hike rates, then it doesn't really make sense to 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 buy, in my opinion. But I guess um, the decision to to trade in the direction is totally up to you, the viewer. So um, euro pound, the euro pound with the pound um, and the Bank of England being a bit more dovish, you've seen prices really kind of just um, uh, sell off for the pound in terms of the euro strengthen. Um, I do think that. The pound should be more of the buy against the uh, against the euro. So either shorts now, or you're looking at a bit more pullback if you haven't got in, and then looking for something like that. So um, I do like this in terms of a, um, a, as a short. Although I'm kind of cool on the idea of of the actual pair, um, there is an opportunity if you do still believe that the pound is in a better position than the euro. So pullback nice um and a decent trade if you're looking for long trades then you're looking at this uh demand zone here for a uh, long trade and buying the euro against the pound but let's see how the data plays out on each pair aussie dollar aussie dollar i do think that the australian dollar is going to be one of the stronger pairs for uh, 2024 um, although we've pulled back against the dollar, I do think um, if if I'm going to buy anything against the dollar, it's going to be the Australian dollar. So I think any pullbacks into this demand zone or just below, I think are going to be very, very nice trades. Uh, the Australian dollar did get some really good news on unemployment this week. And so that has pushed the um, the chances of a rate cut further into the future, which should strengthen the Australian dollar overall. Um, and so let's see what happens with with that. And um, but for me, I think any pullbacks are buying opportunities um, on this currency pair. If you do want to be a buyer of the US dollar, then you're looking for really a pullback up into this supply zone, and then looking for a short trade like that. And finally, looking at gold, and gold has made some higher highs. So we've got move higher pulled back, made a higher high. So now this starts to become a demand zone right here. So you can look for some long trades there, but that's if you believe that the uh, the dollar is a sell or let's say, for example, um, data supports a dollar sell, inflation data comes in lower, then the gold should want to go higher. The danger with this though, is that you've got um, some unfair auctions just below it. So uh, ultimately, if you are looking to trade uh, this this gap, then um, yeah, I think it's a bit more of a tricky one. I'd wait for prices to kind of prove that there is, um, you know, demand before looking at entering into any new trades. So first area is right here at the 2160s and down to like the 2146s. And um, if that kind of breaks, that zone breaks through, then I wouldn't trade anything until we start to see higher highs, higher lows or lower highs and lower lows and then look for supply zones. But um, um, I think the trigger would have to be looking for some dollar, um, some dollar uh, uh, data and news this week. So, yeah, let's see what happens. Yeah, core PCE is coming out on 
um, what's that, Friday, yes, yeah, so maybe until Thursday, start to position yourself if you want to look for long trades in hope that the PCE data does come out lower. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. Um, hope you enjoyed the analysis. And uh, again, just a quick reminder uh, that the um, you can get the join the Discord group. Uh, I am opening on the 3rd of April. Enrollment opens on the uh, in eight days, 16 hours from this the recording of this video, of course. And um, I know there's been a, quite a few people uh, who are interested. And so, yeah, when you're uh, when you're ready, uh, you can email me and let me know. And um, I'll let you know when enrollment opens. And so I look forward to working with you if you are interested. All right, guys, take care. Speak to you soon and all the best.